This is Ultra Fractal 5 Extended Edition. Uh, financially, it's a efficient way to make video, especially compared to going out and filming. And also, it creates a very controlled environment. So, anything you wish to do with the images, manipulating them, can be done here. I've opened a couple of files to just demonstrate what the interface looks like. This first one is a collection of fractals that have been changed around with a couple of PNG files on top. If you haven't used the PNG files, then what they do is they have opacity around them. So the picture of the head is just a picture of the head. It was generated in a 3D program. But you can do similar with Photoshop and create text files like this one. So that's kind of how that works. You just put it on top and then you can see everything behind. If you like to just mash things up a bit, then you can have something more like this, which is just has an image on the front. The way that it reacts with the other files underneath is called HLS Edition. If I set it to normal, it comes back to being a some kind of fractal. I'm not sure how it was generated, but so blended in, it just gives that. The way to import a picture is you can duplicate a layer, you go to formula, has to be on pixel, you go to outside and it has to be image. So when you click on that, it'd be in the standard UCL and it says image. So to load the image you like. Again, another PNG. Open it up. Change it to normal. And you get a clear picture on the top. The benefit of a timeline is that you can see exactly what you want, or you can see exactly what you get. It's a little bit slow in rendering, as, as you'd probably know, fractals take up a lot of uh, processing. So once you have a stream of, or once you have a timeline that you like, you can export it in different ways. I rarely use the AVI output. I nearly always go for PNG files. They seem to work well in the video programs. So Fractal, render the disk. Um, you create where you want the pictures to go. Entire animation, click OK, and it just starts rendering your images. Some things to look out for when you're doing this are going to be the image size. So when you want to create an animation, the first thing you want to do is choose what size you like. Um, and once you've done that, the other thing you want to look at is the quality of the fractal or the iterations as it's called. If you go too high on this, it will take forever to render 
a few hundred images. And if you want to make a video that's three minutes long, it can take a couple of thousand. Uh, and that's just for one layer. So if you want to do a video of something like this, say this is just a still image from a sequence. So if you wanted a, a moving sequence of 3D on, on top of a background, then you, it means you have an awful lot of video files. So you need to make them as small as possible. Uh, if in terms of nothing else, the actual time it will take to render it all. But that's kind of video making anyway. In terms of just using this program, I find it's very useful. You get all sorts of different colours and patterns come out. This head, in fact, I remapped it with its, its background. So it kind of it looks the same as the background that it has. And even if you're not making video and you just want to do still, then this gives you a, an awful lot of permutations to think, oh yeah, I like that one, you know, as opposed to something else. There are an almost infinite amount of things you can do with this. You can take an image and, and remap it with different parameters. So uh, depending on what layer you have, you go to your layer, you can remap it with something all these different patterns and shapes. Uh, the lake's quite interesting, so it looks like a reflection. Or there's a kaleidoscope in there, that's quite fun. And all sorts of different things. This one here has something called cell 4 on it. So Again, all these different things could happen to the fractal you're working on, so they don't really look much like fractals by the time they've been uh, manipulated. So that's a very brief look at Ultra Fractal 5 and if you're serious about your video making it's probably worth investing in.